My name is Donald Bay. I'm one of the orthopedic hand surgeons in the Department of Orthopedic Surgery at Children's Hospital in Boston. One of the most common conditions we encounter in our hand and upper extremity program is syndactyly. Syndactyly is a term used to describe conjoined or webbed fingers. Syndactyly can oftentimes be hereditary, though has what we call incomplete penetrance, uh, meaning that not all family members may necessarily be affected. While the diagnosis of syndactyly is typically made shortly after birth, oftentimes the diagnosis can be made on prenatal ultrasound or other prenatal testing. Um, the diagnosis is confirmed after a physical examination by a hand and upper extremity surgeon, and x-rays are often taken again to assess the bony structures beneath the skin and to help us further classify the nature of the syndactyly. There are some syndactylies which are what we call complete, where the webbing or the connection between digits extends all the way to the fingertip. There are other situations where the syndactyly may be incomplete, where the skin joins the fingers together but does not extend all the way to the fingertip. In addition, fingers can be joined strictly by skin and soft tissue alone, the so-called simple syndactyly, or, in fact, there may be fusion of the bony elements of adjacent fingers, and that's something we would refer to as a complex syndactyly. Treatment involves surgical correction or separation of the conjoined or webbed fingers. This may be done as early as six to nine months of age, and the timing of surgery and the nature of surgery depends a little bit upon the pattern of involvement and which digits are involved. In patients who have more than one set of fingers which are webbed or conjoined, this may in fact involve more than one operation early in life. One key principle about syndactyly release or syndactyly surgery is to understand that when fingers are webbed or conjoined, the amount of skin that is around the fingers that are connected um, is insufficient to cover the surface area of the fingers once they're separated. For this reason, it is very common to use what we call skin graft to patch or cover the areas that are bare after these types of procedures. We will commonly borrow excess skin from the waist or the hip crease, at times from the elbow or even other parts of the hand. And thankfully, we're able to harvest skin from these areas and use it in our reconstructions, leaving a very minimally noticeable scar with no functional effect on the site from which the skin is taken. Usually after surgery, patients are in a cast or a dressing for about three or four weeks, followed by a short period of time where we'll have the patients work with our occupational therapists. And the great thing about the operation is that we can achieve independent digits with preservation of function in the vast majority of situations. Rarely after surgery is done in infancy do people require secondary procedures in the Department of Orthopedic Surgery within the Hand and Upper Extremity Program, we have a whole team of surgeons, nurses, wonderfully skilled therapists, nurse practitioners, and physician assistants who help guide families with young children with syndactyly, both from the time of diagnosis all the way to surgical reconstruction and beyond.